Hi everyone, this is Matt from The Pen Habit. Welcome back to another video. Um, so I wanted to, since it's been about a year since I started my whole fountain pen journey, uh, one of the things I thought I'd do is take a little bit of time and actually do a top five once a year. So you can see what my top five of the year is. Um, anyone who's co started collecting or using a lot of fountain pens knows that that top five changes probably on a daily basis. So it will be completely inconsistent, I suspect, but uh, wanted to talk about the top five. And these are all pens I've reviewed before, so I will link to those uh, to, to each pen's review as I go through it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and actually do these in order. Um, I'll start at number five and work my way up to the top. And number five is this little beauty from 1929. This is a Waterman's Ideal, or excuse me, 1927, I believe. This is a Waterman's Ideal number seven with a red flex nib. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful vintage pen. Um, ordered it online, uh, or, or bought it on eBay rather, got it at a pretty good price. And uh, it's it's just a very, very pretty pen. Oh, I need to zoom out just a touch here. In uh, in red and black swirled ebonite with a flexible nib. So you can see the tines separating there. Um, I don't use this pen as much as I would like to. Um, I, I haven't had a lot of practice in flex writing. But I love this pen, and I love the the way the nib feels. This is I finally understand. This is not a full flex nib. Uh, th those are the the pink nibs on these Waterman Ideal Number no. Sevens. But man, this I, I consider this a flex pen, a vintage flex. Um, even though it's not their full flex, they called it a semi flex compared to anything that I bought today. Beautiful pen, love it. Fits comfortably in my hand, and uh, those few times I do pull it out for writing, I love what it does to my handwriting. So that is number five. Uh, number four, and this surprised me, and it, because I like expensive pens. <laughs> there's, there's really no way around it. I, most of my favorite pens are, are pretty expensive. But this is one that isn't, and it's one I've just received recently, and I'm shocked at how much I like it. And that is the Monteverde Impressa. So this is a metal-bodied pen in this beautiful gunmetal and red finish. It fits beautifully in the hand. It writes wonderfully. I mean, just absolutely wonderfully. And it's so stylish and sleek, and it's unlike any other pen in my collection. It's really a beautiful pen. And at 40 US bucks, I think Monteverde, Monteverde scored a real hit with this pen. I, I really, really like the pen a lot. Uh, pen number three is uh, <laughs> is one that I'm surprised made the top five, but the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, no, I really like this pen. Uh, and it is the Stipula Etruria Rainbow Demonstrator Pen. It's a limited edition pen. And this is the pen that I won from Farney's Pens in Washington, D.C. Uh, several months ago. Uh when it came to me, it had some problems with the nib. The nib had been overpolished and has a pretty severe case of baby's bottom. Um, but after doing some work on getting the nib writing, oh, I adore this pen. This is probably, of the pens in my collection, the second most comfortable pen I own. The way that the section swoops down in this very graceful curve, um, I can show you over here on the close-up cam, it just fits so snugly and perfectly in my hands. It writes beautifully. It has a massive ink capacity as a piston filler. Um, you know, it it operates really, really smoothly. Um, and I'm not generally a big fan of demonstrator pens. I don't, I don't adore them, especially colored demonstrators. But this just looks so much nicer in person than it did in the photos. Uh, it's beautifully constructed, writes like a dream once I fix the nib problems. And because it fits my hand so well, this just rocketed right to the right to the top five list. Uh, next one, number two countdown here is the Visconti Salvador, da, or excuse me, I always do this. This is the Visconti Van Gogh. And excuse me, I think I think that's the correct pronunciation. Someone corrected me on the earlier video. Uh, I will I will call it Van Gogh since that's how we pronounce it here in the United States, even though it's wrong. Um, but uh, 
I think this is probably the single prettiest pen in my collection. The acrylic on this pen is just absolutely stunning. The 18 faceted barrel, um, the, the beautiful coloring of the acrylic that's, uh, that kind of replicates Van Gogh's Starry Night, the, the magnetic cap, such a, such a lovely sound. Um, the, the section and the smooth transition of the section right up into the barrel. And then of course these nibs, and this is a steel nib, which is a steel nib on a $250 pen is, you don't see a lot of that, but whatever the Visconti wizards do at their factory with these nibs, and I don't, I don't know if they make their own nibs or not. Whoever makes these nibs, they deserve a raise because these are some of the most beautifully writing nibs I've got. I have a fine and a medium. Uh, the medium actually I bought with the Salvador Dali pen, which is basically the same pen, but with a melted clock over the top and a different acrylic. Um, but they're completely interchangeable. So I can, I can swap them back and forth between the two pens. And it's, it's a beautiful pen. It writes wonderfully. And it is so comfortable in the hand. It just Again, this is one of those pens that I start writing with it and my handwriting instantly improves. So, love this pen. Which leads us to number one. And uh, if you've watched my videos before, this one probably won't be a big surprise to you. It is the Conway Stewart Wellington. This is the pen that I bought locally, a uh, limited edition in the Dartmoor finish. And you can see it's just that, that beautiful brown and black and a kind of white veined stone-like finish. This is a stunning pen. It's a beautiful pen. But what makes this pen a joy to write with is the way it feels in my hand. I can honestly say I have never held a more comfortable pen in my life. This just fits my hand perfectly. It's perfectly balanced. It's perfectly weighted. And this is another one of those pens where, you know, it was $550, $600. I don't remember off the top of my head. It's an expensive pen. Um, and I bought it and instantly the nib had problems and I was not a pleased person. But uh, Conway Stewart did, absolutely took care of me. You know, I sent this off to Mary, who is uh, who is the U.S. representative for support. And she forwarded this, this forwarded this pen. This is an italic fine nib. And she sent this off to Mike Masayama who at the time lived in Georgia. I believe he lives in Los Angeles now. And Mike is a wizard and worked his magic on this pen. And it it is, this is one of those pens, you just touch the nib to the paper and it almost use, writes by itself. It's just a gorgeous, gorgeous pen, a beautiful writer. It's the only italic nib I have. And I know Conway Stewart's italic nibs tend to be a little on the cursive italic side. They're not like true, super sharp italics but that's perfect for me because I don't need a super sharp italic nib. Um, I adore this pen. It's my baby. That's kind of creepy. Uh, <laughs> but So that is, that's my top five for 2013. Um, and I'm sure I'll do another one early next year that's maybe completely different. There might be one or two pens that are the same, but for the most part, uh, this is my top five for the year right now. And, uh, my goal when I buy pens is not to buy pens just for the sake of them. My goal when I buy pens is to buy pens that knock one of these out of the top five. I would love to be able to knock one of them out of the top five because it means I found another really great pen. Um, a couple of honorable mentions that I would like to call out. Um, I have the Omas Bologna is one of them. I, I really do like this pen. Uh, the Pelican Souverain M805 is a great one. I have a Mont Blanc 149, which I like, but I'm liking less and less as time goes on, as I get to experience other pens, and my Visconti Homo Sapiens Bronze Age. Those are some of my honorable mentions. But uh, So, quick review. Waterman's Ideal number 7 with the red flex nib. The Monteverde Impressa in the gunmetal and red finish with medium nib. The Stipula Etruria Rainbow Limited Edition. Uh, with a medium gold nib, the Visconti Sal Visconti Van Gogh uh, Starry Night with a fine or medium nib, and finally the Pièce de Résistance, my Conway Stewart Wellington Dartmoor 
with an italic fine nib. So that's my top five for 2013, and we'll have a new one coming up soon, I'm sure. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye.